What's up guys, Edrone here. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at my new electric XP 3.0 e-bike. Stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you hit, please hit that subscribe and like, it would be appreciated. Um, this is not an e-bike channel. This is a, a drone channel, and I typically do drone reviews and tutorials and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that stuff, definitely check it out. But I wanted to go ahead and take this video and go ahead and come at this as a beginner point of view here. Coming from someone completely new to e-bikes, never owned an e-bike before. This is my first e-bike, and I wanted to kind of bring you along and, and just kind of show you what my experiences have been with this bike to hopefully help, you know, um, help your decision in deciding if you want to purchase this bike or if you want to get something else, or if this might not be for you. So let me first off by saying that um, the, the way I found this bike, it was actually from camping. You can see I have my camper behind me. Me and the family do a lot of camping, um, you know, various sites throughout the, the state here. And I came across these bikes at a campsite. Uh, a couple of people were riding them by. And I, I knew they looked different. I could tell that they were they were different than your traditional bicycle. So I, I asked them if I could, you know, take a look at it. And they, they pulled right over and they were like, yeah, yeah, I had to take a look at it. The name is what really caught my eye, electric. So as soon as I saw that, I said, okay, there's got to be something to this. And that's how I learned about the whole electric uh, e-bike, you know, brand and everything. And um, everybody that I talked to about it, had really positive things to say. They said, man, they're really affordable, you know, you, they have a lot of features and functions. And I thought, okay, let me do a little bit more research into this. So I started diving and researching more about this particular e-bike. And then it wasn't until um, I met up with my friend PDB FPV at the drift track. He actually had an electric bike as well that he had purchased. And uh, I was like, man, there's another one of those bikes. I said, man, how do you like it? You know, is it working good for you? And he had nothing but positive things to say, said, yeah, it's great value and, and, and this and that. And I actually asked him, hey, man, would you let me ride your bike? Like, let me try it out because I had no idea whether, you know, this thing was, was electric all the time, if it was electric sometimes. And I learned a lot about this bike uh, just from, you know, talking with people and, and, and PDB let me actually get on the bike and ride it and talking me over some things. And once I rode it, that was when it, it, it just snapped. I was like, this is the bike I want to get. Um, you know, the weight limit works really good for me. Um, I'm about 280 pounds. And the weight limit on this bike here, the, the XP 3.0, I believe is 380 pounds. And you can hold 150 pounds on this one on the back rack, which is really nice. So if you want to carry, you know, a small passenger or if you have extra cargo that you want to carry, like maybe your drone backpack. Or maybe you just want to go to the grocery store and grab some groceries, you know, super convenient that that it has that back rack. So, like I said, this is not an e-bike channel. I don't do e-bike reviews typically on on the channel. This is something that I wanted to buy for myself personally. And I wanted to get something that was going to be portable, foldable, something I could you know put in the back of my truck without taking up a ton of space. And this bike here checked all the boxes. It folds up really small. You could put this in the back of a sedan if you really needed to. I mean, it folds up that that small. You could really put it in some really, you know, places where you wouldn't be able to get a traditional bicycle or e-bike. So what I want to do is I want to take you through my experience of, um, you know, unboxing this. Now, I didn't take a lot of video in the unboxing process. And there's tons of videos that show you online how to unbox this thing. But let me tell you that from my experience, it was boxed up really well. Everything was clearly labeled, you know, lots of detailed instructions on, uh, you know, what to do, QR codes you can scan if you want to learn more about the bike in particular. And uh, it was packed up really well. And I'm really amazed that they're able to fit this into the box pretty much just about ready to ride out of the box. Now, there is a couple things that, you know, you do need to do um, that I learned about um, once you get the bike out of the box and you get all the tags off of it and all the foam and the zip ties and everything. There is a couple things that you're going to want to do before you hop on to ride it. And we're going to go over those in, the, in this video as well. I'm going to take you along the process and my journey on how I got this bike all set up and ready for the road. And man, what a great experience I had on this. We're also going to go over, you know, the, the pros and the cons from my standpoint, uh, my experiences with the bike as well. And, and, and some of the things that I liked about it, some of the things I didn't like about it. 
And hopefully this will help, you know, uh, make your mind up. If you ha have your uh, eyes set on one of these uh, e-bikes, maybe this will be the video that may be uh, helpful to you to decide if you want to purchase this bike or not. All right, to go ahead and get started, I went ahead and grabbed my uh, torque wrench here. And we grabbed a uh, air pump here, which is a foot air pump, some rubbing alcohol, and a rag. This is really all you're going to need to get this bike ready to ride. Um, take the rubbing alcohol, put it on a, a rag here, and then just wipe off the brake rotors here. This will take off any uh, residual oils or uh, dirt and dust that may have uh, got on there from the shipping process. And this is recommended by uh, Electric as well. Do the front and rear. Just take your time. Get some of that isopropyl alcohol in there and then just wipe off the surface. Next, I went and took my torque wrench and went through all the torque specs of the electric bike and torqued all of the uh, wheel bolts here for the, for the tires. Went ahead and torqued those to the proper specs, making sure all the bolts were tight. And I would say about 95% of them were tight, ready to go out of the box, but still always a good habit. Make sure you go ahead and get that set up. Went ahead and added air to the front and rear tire about five pounds less than the spec. And the Comfort X uh, spike seat actually comes in a separate box and it gets shipped separately along with the suspension seat post. This was a free upgrade that I was able to get with the deal. You can see the difference here, quite a big, dif big difference. Um, although the suspension seat post doesn't have the markings that the stock seat post has. Went ahead and installed it. And what I made sure is that it was good for my height, which you want it to be right around where your waistline is for the edge of the seat. Once you get it lined into place, you're going to want to tighten up this little knurl here on the bottom as tight as you can get it. And then you're going to want to clamp it tight. And you want this to be really tight, especially if you're uh, a bigger person like I am. You want this thing to be as tight as you can possibly get because you don't want it sliding down while you're riding. You want the suspension seat post to work. Here's a take a look at the saddle here. You can see it has some really nice springs and a really good look on the bike overall. Next, I wanted to install the Lamy Call cell phone holder. This is something I purchased on Amazon, and I'll put links down in the description for this. But basically, it's a one-handed cell phone mount. You can put the cell phone in this mount with one hand. It comes with all the grips you would need to mount it to just about any handlebar. And I decided that um, because of the the brake cables here, we're going to go ahead and mount the uh, the bottom where, where you tighten it up on the bottom here. Uh, this was uh, information that I didn't know about on how to turn on the lights. Go ahead and push and hold on the plus button for three seconds. One, two, three. And you can see the front light headlight comes on pretty bright too the rear light is on as well so that's how you turn the lights on all right so we're going to put the phone in the phone holder here and I like that it's one-handed I really do like the one-handed phone holder I'm gonna go ahead and lock it into place so that holds on there and this is going to be the first ride first impressions and we're going to try to ride this without the motor with the motor um, check out all the gears see how that feels take you guys along for the ride so here we go guys first time being on this e-bike and right now I'm using no pedal assist and honestly it doesn't feel bad I'm going downhill though so even without the motor it doesn't feel too bad and we are in Level three for the pedaling. Not too bad. It feels a little bit heavier than like a regular bike. Honestly, not terrible. All right, let's go down here. And I want to go through some of my gears. This is with uh, pedal assist level zero. So this is all me. All right, now we're fourth gear. 10 mile an hour. 
Let's go to fifth gear. Sixth gear. Now we're really getting some speed now. Seventh gear. So this is seventh gear, no pedal assist, and we're getting up to about 14 miles per hour. I can definitely feel some calorie burn here. Now, let's go ahead and go back down on the pedal here. I'm gonna go back to level three. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this plus button here on the left. We are now pedal assist level one. And I feel a little bit of help, but not much. It's not much of a help. Let's go ahead and go to level four. Yeah, you feel like a little bit of help, but not, not much at all. Let's go ahead and uh, go to pedal assist to level two. That definitely can definitely feel that kicking in. That definitely feels now like it's working harder than I am. So let's go up to level five. Now we let off of the pedals and it stops. So that's good. Let off the pedals and it stops. Now, C feels pretty good. Let's go ahead and try these brakes out. Oh yeah, brakes are working. Sorry about that. Uh, the battery on my camera died, so I had to go back and switch cameras. Let's try this again. So speed level two. Let's uh, turn the gearing down. Busy right now. Woo! Lots of stuff going on. So, I think speed level two is going to be good for most most applications. Speed level two works really well. I'll probably be using speed level two the most. I feel like it's a good combination of me pedaling versus the motor. See, now I feel like I'm ghost pedaling because I'm going down the hill here. So let's go ahead and get the seventh gear. I uh, really like the seat. Seat feels great. Yeah, pedal assist level two, and we're getting up to 16, almost 17 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and put it in pedal assist level three. Now, see what we can top out at for top speed. 19, 20. Now this is class uh, two right now. I have not done the uh, the class three mod yet 20 miles an hour in uh speed level pedal assist three let's go ahead and do level four wow you can really feel when it picks up i mean big time 20. whoo she's cruising now guys I didn't see there was too big of a difference between there it goes, it picked up there. So 19, 20 miles an hour, pedal assist level four. And let's go ahead and hit that pedal assist level five. So this is the max for the class two. And right now I feel like I'm pedaling more than the motor at this point. So obviously if you do the mod, you can get a little more out of it, which we will do. But all in all, it's great. I feel like I can ride so much further with way less effort. So we are in uh, gear seven. Now what I want to do is um, do just the throttle. So I'm going to go ahead and slow down and I'm going to turn the throttle here on the right hand side. Just going to give that a twist. There we are, now we're using just the throttle. And as you can see, we got up to about 17, 18, not bad. So when you get tired, the throttle really helps. 
let's see if it actually slows down if we uh go down to pedal assist level four no it doesn't seem like it does down to three two one yeah slow down maybe a little bit but very very minor uh slowing down with using just the throttle only let's go ahead and turn this up all right now we're at pedal assist level five and we are using the throttle only Whee! <laughs> this is a lot of fun yeah i can definitely see where uh using this throttle will be really nice you know maybe after you've done a pretty steep incline and your legs are tired this would be a good way for you to recoup get some of that energy back so you can go ahead and go back into uh, pedal assist all right so not too bad um we'll do the unlock mod and try this in uh, class three as well see what kind of speeds we can get i think we can get closer to 28 miles per hour go ahead and unlock this bike here into uh, a class three e-bike go ahead and push and hold on the power button turn it on now we're going to hold the plus and the minus button for a couple seconds okay now that we're in the settings menu push the power button until you get to eight right here and then push the plus button to get to 100. And now, we have now unlocked this bike as a class three e-bike. This will do 28 miles an hour in pedal assist level five. But with the throttle only, it will still only do 20 miles per Let's hour. Let's see what this does with pedal level assist level five with the class three unlocked. Here we are. We are in pedal assist level five, gear level seven. Holy cow, 23, 24, 25, 28, 29. We got the 29 miles an hour and it feels like I'm pedaling a little bit fast, but man, what a big difference. Wow, big difference there. We keep going. Wow, this thing's got some power. Here we go, guys. Here we go. 22. We're going to go downhill, so we may reach top speed here. 29. You see it right there. 29 and a half. Yep. 29 and a half, guys. Not going to get much more than that. Here we go. Wow. Makes a big difference when you go to the pedal assist level five with the glass three. Holy cow. It's so much faster. Wow. <laughs> Man, this thing's zipping. Ooh, I feel like we could get going in no time. Wow. I mean, at this at this rate, I could keep up with a decent amount of traffic here. I'm actually doing over the posted speed limit. I haven't seen any cars behind me, but now watch with the throttle. Even with the throttle, guys. Um, on if you unlock it to a class three even with the throttle it's capped out at 20 miles an hour with that wow wow let's take a turn in here i'm gonna go ahead and give her full throttle here wow man that class three really really brings it up a notch guys really brings it up Holy cow. 
and to get you know get full speed out of it i still feel like i have to still have to pedal a decent amount but man the speed the speed increase is insane wow let's try these brakes out oh wow yes yes the hydraulic brakes make a huge difference guys huge difference with the hydraulic brakes i love how i can just kind of slowly start pedaling and then man it just engages and it's just gone you can see now the battery bars come down some so keep in mind with the doing the uh, class three unlock you're going to significantly lower your range on the battery especially going speeds you know 28 29 miles an hour but boy is it fun <laughs> it almost feels like a like a miniature moped at that speed plenty fast plenty fast enough for this area wow i love it we're gonna take this down one more street here and i'm anxious to see what it can do perfect I and mean, you can keep up right with with the traffic guys with this i mean the power 27. I'm looking behind me and i don't even have any cars near where i am so here we go class 3 28 miles an hour on the e-bike pedal assist level 5 really really doing some work here though definitely doing a, a decent amount of pedaling does feel like I have to pedal um, it almost feels like I could use another gear so if they had like maybe one more gear that would be really nice man this thing turns really nice too I wasn't expecting it to turn as good as it does especially with the tires being a little bit wider but it really turns really nice it turns really nice feels really good man really really good going around the circle here come back around i'm gonna go up a little bit of an incline no problem at all for the electric especially unlocked it's really fun i mean especially when you unlock it uh as a class three and you can get up to almost you know almost 30 miles an hour uh, it's just a lot of fun man left a you know big smile on my face you know had a great time with it let's go over some of the things that i liked about the bike uh first and foremost is the price this is a really good value bike coming in at under a thousand dollars for the model i have here with the standard battery and what you get for the money is is nothing short of spectacular i feel for value i mean you're getting the upgraded hydraulic brake system you, you know you, you got lights front and rear come with it you got front and rear metal fenders the integrated um, 500 watt, 1000 watt peak, you know, hub based motor in the rear that provides a really good amount of power when you need it. Um, I really do like the motor. It, it just feels really good. And I really love the power control controller that this thing has. The power controller where it actually um, will ramp up the speed slowly according to the way you're pedaling, you know, the, how much. Uh, how much you're pedaling the bike, you know, as you start to increase the pedaling, the, the, the motor will slowly start to give you the power when you need it. It's not like all at once. It's not like a jerking or anything like that. It doesn't go from zero to, to full or anything like that. It works really good. I love the power control module. It really makes for a great user experience. Um, the tires, I really like the tires. They feel really good on road. Um, so I can only imagine that they're going to feel good off road as well. Um, the only, the only thing I don't like about the tires is they are a little bit smaller, um, but that's to be expected because it is a folding bike. Now, if the tires were larger, it would be a lot more cumbersome to try and fold this and stow this um, to be able to, to travel with it and make it more compact. So I, I totally understand why they went with the smaller tires, but it doesn't diminish the, the feel by any means uh, for me. Um, the folding mechanisms, you know, they're secure. They're simple to use you know once you use them a couple times really easy to use um folding the bike up is is, is okay it's a little bit cumbersome by yourself 
I think if you had uh, an extra set of hands, it would really make it a lot easier when you go to fold this bike down. But nevertheless, you can fold it down by yourself. The stock seat, um, I'm glad that they offered, the electric offered the, the, the free upgrade to the comfort saddle with the suspension seat post. Um, I had everything locked in tight and everything felt good for the ride. Gave me a little bit of a buffer when I hit bumps and stuff like that. And the seat was really comfortable. Um, the stock seat's okay. The stock seat doesn't look bad for, you know, coming straight out of the box. But definitely, if you're looking to upgrade your comfort level, definitely think about getting that comfort saddle. Um, I really think it was a, a, a great value to be able to get that for no extra cost for the special that electric was running. They run specials from now and from now and again. They'll throw in different accessories. They normally don't discount the price of the bikes from what I've seen. But what they do is they'll give you, you know, um, they'll give you accessory bundles to pair along with the bike when you purchase it, stuff like that. So that's really cool that they're, you know, they're keeping the price affordable. They're keeping the price low, even though they're upgrading this bike from the last year's model. They still kept the price the same as the year before. And then obviously you have the specials where you can, you know, bundle in some accessories and get even more of a value. So I really like that. Um, I've heard the customer support is, is really good. I can't attest to it because I haven't used it yet. But I have heard that the customer support is really good. And that was another uh, key uh, selling point for me in deciding to purchase this bike. Let's go over some of the things that I don't like about the bike that are kind of annoying. And you may find them annoying too. And hopefully we'll see some improvements on future renditions of this bike. First and foremost, the one thing I can't stand about this bike is the fact that they put the key to the battery underneath of the frame. Man, super it's super annoying. It's very inconvenient to, to be able to have that key underneath of the bike. So you have to reach down and bend over to, to, to see which position the key's in. Now, I know you can get the key in there and just turn it, you know, uh, without having to look at it. But man, having the key on the side would have made way more sense, easier access. I don't know if they did that, you know, to help with preventing like theft or anything like that. But I find it really inconvenient. So Maybe we could have the key mounted on the side next time on future renditions. That was a, that was a huge inconvenience for me. Uh, the second thing that I find uh, I didn't like about this bike is the folding pedals. Now, I understand that you have to put folding pedals on this to make this fold up to be smaller, to be able to transport it and stow it and all that. But, man, when you go to ride them, I feel like my feet are constantly trying to slip off the pedals. Um, I don't know if they could have made them a little bit larger and still be able to fold give your foot a little bit more surface to grip. But just keep in mind when you're pedaling, you know, at high speeds with the pedal assist, especially in class three, you may want to think about upgrading the pedals, get something a little bit larger, give you more, give your feet something more to grab onto while you're riding. I really think that this bike is as popular as it is because it has so much features and functions for the price range. Um, a lot of bikes, you know, that come in lower than this, or even higher than this, don't have some of the features and functions that this bike has. I've seen some e-bikes well over a thousand dollars that don't have the, the the front wheel fender. You know, and that can be annoying when you you splash into a puddle or, or get into a dirt road. Stuff can can shoot up and get all over you. You know, the fender is going to help with that, keep you keep you a little bit more cleaner while you're riding. So keep that in mind. You know, when you're when you're thinking about looking for an e-bike. And my thoughts were, I want to get the most value for my money. What's the best I can get for the money, you know, without breaking the bank. I had a very specific price that I wanted to be able to target. And this one just fit all the bills. This one, you know, $999 with the standard range battery was a, was a no brainer for me. The, the price was right. The value is there. And all, overall, I'm really satisfied with the bike. I, I couldn't be happier with it. Um, I'm going to be taking taking it on all my camping trips. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please, please like, share, subscribe. And uh, you're going to see more of this e-bike on my channel for sure. I'm going to be taking this bike to, to meetups, meeting up with friends, you know, flying drones, stuff like that, anything close by. Definitely going to hop on this, uh, save, save gas. 